Yeah. Yes. Come up and read. Fuck you in your reading. You were prepared. Come up here and read your juvenilia. Yes. Look, you're on page 58. We put you right in the middle of the magazine. We thought you were special. I'm on 58. You owe me a list. It's right where the perfume ad is. <laughs> there were ads? Yeah. You know, you open right after the perfume ad, it's like, oh my god. It's called My Good Side. My ex wife. See how that worked? <laughs> my ex wife used to talk a lot about metaphors. Everything's a metaphor, she would say. Like when I tried to sell real estate and I bought a black 66 Olds Tornado. Just like the one Maddox used to drive. It was a steal at two grand. Not a ding or a scratch on it. That's important because you've got to project success in the real estate game. Who wants to buy a house from a guy in a beat up Fairmont, right? Okay, 22. Yeah, 22. 25. It's like juvenilia. It's like all about Lulu times two. My card won't clear. I didn't know what I was going to read. I'm so sick of everything. So, uh,. I found this, uh, we were kind of doing a remodel in our house and we were cleaning up and I found this novel I wrote like 10 years ago. <laughs> and so I wasn't sick of it. So um, I'm going to read it. It's my, uh, it's my Hollywood novel. And uh, I wrote this after I'd been working for a couple couple of years in Hollywood, like reading scripts and, and writing scripts and stuff. And um, so I wrote my Hollywood. Shelley was drunk. Elmer Gantry drunk. His ever-patient companion, Frank, 30 years a friend and associate, had not contributed so much as a word to their dialogue in over 20 minutes. They held court on Shelley's patio, a landing suspended precariously over a hillside, from which point they looked over rooftops, down on Franklin and Ibar streets, down upon the Capitol Records building with its red steeple light blinking out Hollywood and Morse code. It was Shelley's 62nd birthday, and the benefit of those 62 years had allowed him, he believed, a unique perspective upon a crumbling civilization. My God, Frank, our shoes don't even have laces anymore. I heard an ad today for a five pound pizza. A five pound pizza. Is this what we've come to? This is where the 5,000 year march of civilization has led us? It's madness. We're fat, Frank, and we can't stop eating. A sure sign of dissatisfaction. I mean, people are getting weird, Frank. Nothing's sacred anymore. Do you know my own son hasn't called me on my birthday since he was 15 years old? My own son. He called me once in seven years. And you know what? That was to ask a favor. Just like that. A favor. Strictly professional. And you know what's worse? I asked him a favor right back. We exchanged favors, Frank. Me and my son. And we haven't spoken since. What happened to my boy? The kid with the blue-footed jammies. The kid in the Dodgers hat with the peanut butter on his breath. The kid with the red ring of a Shirley Temple around his mouth. The kid I used to take to the observatory. Shelley refilled his glass and walked to the railing. He looked up into the night sky and found that the ambient light of the Los Angeles Metroplex had all but washed out the stars. He turned back to Frank. Do you know what I heard a couple weeks ago, he said? I'm sitting at the back room at Connors. I'm sitting in the back room at Canners with a client, Clint Rafferty, the kid from Life with Larry. He's in the bathroom. I'm eavesdropping on a conversation between two women in the booth behind me. Listen to this, Frank. One of the women is describing her job. She works for a commercial director. She's his office manager. Anyway, sounds like he's a bit of a nut job, real needy. She says he's got two dogs. They're about 100 years old. They've been scratching at death's door as long as anyone can remember. But this guy, he's determined to keep them alive. They've had every operation you can think of. They're loaded on pharmaceuticals. There's a big basket of prescriptions and ointments she has to administer daily. These dogs can barely walk, Frank. They don't want to move. They're big dogs. A lab and an Akita. This guy's starting to sound familiar. The commercial director, the dogs. Now listen to me. One of her duties is his office manager, Frank. Office manager. As he's got to give these old dogs colonics. Once a week. Colonics, Frank. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. She says he sends her on all kinds of bizarre errands. He's got her returning underwear without receipts, buying milk thistle from the Chinese apothecary, detailing a Harley he's afraid to drive. Not exactly the kind of things to manage an office. But the Harley, Frank, I know this guy. And here's the clincher. One day, a couple years back, he calls her into his office and he says to her, I need you to drop, my, I, I need you to drop by my therapist's office. 
and he gives her the address. So she shows up at the therapist and she says, I think I'm supposed to pick something up here. Shelly paused for a big splash of wine. Well, the shrink, he says, sit down, sit down. So she sits down, expecting him to produce a package or some literature or a prescription for a mood stabilizer, but no. He sits down directly across from her with a clipboard and after a minute he says, so how is Paul? Paul, I kid you not, Frank. Has Paul resolved anything with his ex-wife? Has Paul been depressed? How's his tennis coming along? The poor woman's mortified, see? Well, she says, I think Paul still feels hurt and confused about Barry Stern's comments over dinner last week. What do you think Paul thinks Barry meant when he said those things? I think Paul feels that Barry still feels bitter about the Chevy campaign. Is Paul bitter about the Chevy campaign? Yes. Yes, he is a little bit. Has he been elusive? Yes, a little bit. I mean to Barry. Yes, to Barry. Give me an example. Well, he won't take Barry's calls. Well, why don't you, or why doesn't he confront Barry? I think he's scared. Did he tell you that? Not in words. What did he say about my father? Or what did he say about his father? Nothing. Tell him I really think it's time. I told him. Keep telling him.